Hi everyone. Being lazy is a good thing sometimes. Because if you're lazy, you'll just find the easiest way to get things done. And that's exactly what you want when editing audio in Pro Tools. In this video, I'm going to give you some tips to speed up your Pro Tools editing. Okay, before we start, I assume in this video that you already know the basics of Pro Tools and you want to speed up your editing skills. So, in that case, the first tip would definitely be use keyboard shortcuts. It's an obvious one, maybe. Every time you want to bounce your mix, for example, you could go to File and then find Bounce Mix and, well, bounce your mix. That is too much work. Shortcuts are faster. In this case, that would be Alt Command B. That opens up the Bounce Mix window. I have put some shortcuts that you will use a lot in a cheat sheet on audiokickstart.com and I've put a link to that in the description below. I'm using Mac here, but in the sheet you will also find the PC shortcuts. Okay, so use shortcuts. But then my next tip would be work with keyboard command focus mode. The standard command for cutting something, like this piece of audio, is command X or control X on PC. Pasting it would be command V. Zooming in and out can be done with command and then these brackets over here. But don't do it this way, because in Pro Tools you can use keyboard command focus. It's enabled with this little AZ button over here. And if enabled, you don't have to use the modifier key anymore. So cutting is simply done by pressing X. Pasting is done with V. And zooming in and out can be done with T and R. The fact that you don't have to use the modifier key anymore is nice maybe, but it's just a small time saver. But the big advantage is actually that all the shortcuts you use most when editing are now directly under your left hand. So zooming in with T and R, copying something with C, cutting something with X, pasting something with V, separating a clip with B, fading in and out with F, and of course the spacebar for starting and stopping playback. So you hardly need to move your left hand anymore. There's actually only one reason to move that hand, and that is to select the tools. In Pro Tools, you've got three basic tools. You've got the grabber tool to pick up and move audio. You've got the selector tool to select a bit of audio, or maybe delete it or something. And you've got the trim tool to trim the beginning or the end of an audio file. As a consequence, you will have to switch between the different tools all the time. Of course, if you have listened to my first tip, you don't do this with your mouse. You use shortcuts. In this case, that is F6, F7, and F8 to switch between the tools. But then you have to move your left hand all the way to the F6, F7, and F8 key. That's way too tiring. So the solution is to use the smart tool. To activate it, you click on this thing above the three tools, and they all get highlighted. And now it's pretty simple. Let's zoom in a little. Move your cursor to the bottom half of an audio clip and it becomes the grabber tool. Move it to the top half and it becomes the selector tool. And place your cursor at the beginning or at the end of an audio file and it becomes the trim tool. So no need to switch between tools anymore. It may take some time to get used to the smart tool though, but in the long run, in my opinion, it's definitely faster to work with it, especially in combination with the keyboard command focus function. It's all small time savers perhaps, but it will add up and it will help you become a really fast Pro Tools editor. Another way to save a little bit of time is to use Windows configurations. There are some things that you have to do all the time in Pro Tools. In sound design sessions, for example, I tend to use the pitch shift function a lot of time. So I could go to Audio Suite and then select the plugin I want. But I do it all the time, so it's a lot of work to go to the Audio Suite menu every time. In a music session like this one, this is a drum session. An example of something that you would do all the time could be tweaking the plugins on the drum bus, for example. So then you would have to switch to the mixer view. You would have to find the drum bus. There it is. And then we, you would have to open the plugins you want. But that is obviously way too much work because, yeah, we're lazy. So this is where the Windows configurations function comes in. Let me close all the plugins and go back. It's really simple. You take kind of a snapshot of a screen at a certain moment, and then you can recall the snapshot with one mouse click. How to do it? Press Alt Command J, and this will open up the Windows configurations list. Now just rearrange the screen as you like, for example, opening the uh, plugins on the drum group like this. 
something like this, maybe rearrange them a little bit. And then you go to the Windows configurations list and press this little triangle over here. There you select a new configuration and you give this configuration a name. Then press enter and your new configuration is here. Now, by simply clicking it, you open up the screen with all the drum bus plugins. I've made another one over here. So I've made this before. This is actually the drum bus plugins. And this is the one we just made, which is also a drum bus. So yeah, now I would delete one of those. What I also always do is make a snapshot of a clean window. So when I click that, I go back to my main screen. Okay, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is using shortcuts when routing tracks. In Pro Tools, you will have to route tracks to buses or outputs all the time. And if you have to route multiple tracks to multiple outputs or buses, there are some nice shortcuts to do this very quickly. So let's say you have made a drum bus, uh, which I did over here, and you want to route all the drum tracks to that bus. Well, then simply select all the drum tracks by holding Shift and clicking the first and the last track. Then press and hold Shift and Alt. And then on the first track, select the bus you want to route all the tracks to. So let's say it's 25 and 26. And as you can see, now all the tracks you've selected go to bus 25 and 26. Okay, in this case, we routed all the tracks to the same bus, but let's say you have eight tracks. Let's make them. You do that with the shortcut Command Shift N, by the way. Eight mono audio tracks. There we go. Here they are. Um, now let's say we want to route them all to input one to eight and output one to eight. Again, you have to select them all by holding shift and clicking the first and the last track. Next, you hold Alt, Shift and Command, and you select on the first track, the first input. So analog one in this case. As you see, it now automatically routes the first track to analog one, the second to two, the third to three, et cetera, et cetera. And we can do exactly the same with the outputs. Hold, Alt, Command, Shift. Select the first track. Select the first output you want to route it to. So let's say it's 8 at 1 and 2 in this case, or 8 at 1. And there we go. The first track is going to 8 at 1, the second to 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. So I hope this helps you on your way to speed up your editing skills in Pro Tools. And if you want, have a look at the list of Pro Tools shortcuts I've put on audiokickstart.com. You will find a link to that in the description below. That's it. Thanks for watching. For more tutorials, go to audiokickstart.com.